Hope Initiative empowers 1,000 women in Kwara State with cash awards. Nigeria gets support from the United Nations to combat terrorism as correspondent examines the issues and gaps in rebuilding the lives of victims. And also, legal framework to stop the exportation of timber to protect forests and wetlands in focus. We are glad to welcome you to the correspondence this week. Our package today will show, educate and inform you. Thanks for always being there. I am Zenret Dingmun. Let's begin with women empowerment. For the small and medium enterprises in Kwara State, their lives have taken a new dimension as 1,000 women who are petty traders received 50,000 naira each to support their businesses and also overcome various economic challenges. This gesture is Kasi, Nigeria's first lady, Oluraimi Tinubu, through her Renewed Hope Initiative Economic Empowerment Program. Correspondent Aisha Abubakariaya tells us more. The population of women in Nigeria, according to World Bank's collection of development indicators, was reported to be between 45 and 49% in 2024. Many Nigerian women contribute to the country's gross domestic products through petty trading in various markets. It is in a bid to grow their businesses and allow them to overcome various challenges that the Renewed Hope Initiative Economic Empowerment Program of Nigeria's First Lady, Senator Olura Mitinubu, is giving 50,000 Naira each to 1,000 women petty traders in Kwara State. Represented by the wife of the Kwara State Governor, Mrs. Olufolake Abdurazak, Senator Olura Mitinubu told the market women that the Renewed Hope Initiative Economic Program will continue to support them and their businesses through timely cash intervention and food palliatives to cushion the effects of the current economic challenges in the country. By empowering women economically, it's not just a moral imperative, but a strategic one. When women thrive, thrive, their families thrive, and by extension, our communities and nation prosper. A lot of petty traders are finding it very difficult to sustain their business um, in this current situation that we are in. This 50,000 will allow them to pull this money into their um, working operational um, cost. Go a long way in assisting our market women, especially traders in the States, most especially PWDs, women with disabilities in the States. Some of the beneficiaries were presented with checks of 50,000 Naira to kickstart the payment. We are not done with the First Lady's Nationwide Renewed Hope Initiative Economic Empowerment Program, our State House Correspondent Adeni Taiwo joins us to speak further on the program. You're welcome to the correspondence, Adeni. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you, Zinred. All right. Now, as a reporter covering the activities of the First Lady, let's share in your perspective of the Renewed Hope Initiative's Economic Empowerment Program of the First Lady and its objectives, of course. All right. Um, the economic uh, programs of the First Lady is one out of the five key pillars of our intervention. We talk about health, education, social investment, and of course, agriculture. All these key focus areas put together, uh, they speak to our intention to use the initiative as a special purpose vehicle to drive, you know, um, engagement mm -hmm. with the vulnerable groups in the uh, mm -hmm. in the country, and of course ensure that they have better welfare. Now zeroing down economic empowerment, um, of course, we've seen the first lady, you know, do I mean come up with different interventions in this area. We can talk about uh, a program to equip women with digital skills by, you know, of course, uh, offering them ICT training and with starter packs to ensure that they are players in the digital world. And also we have also seen her, uh, you know, do so many other things, particularly the last one where she doled out 50,000 naira each to 37,000 beneficiaries across the country. All this put together, they speak to one thing. And that is the fact that she has recognized the place of women and youth in Nigeria, you know, in the economic uh, in the scheme of, in the economic scheme of things, 
to ensure that there are players in this sector. And that is why she's taking some of these interventions, resources, putting resources in their hands directly to ensure that they can play, you know, in the informal sector of the economy. The latest intervention, which is empowering women petty traders with 50,000 Naira, one can say how much is 50,000 Naira, but to this category of people, it means a lot. They know what they have to go through to ensure that they have resources to do business. And I've been recognized that, also I've been recognized that in doing their businesses, they have challenges that you know they face, particularly with resources. Uh, she deemed it fit to go around the country. Oh, of course, she flagged off the program in Delta State, in Asaba Delta State, where 1,000 beneficiaries got this uh, grant that she called business recapitalization grant to ensure that they can plow these resources into their business and of course have that leverage to play in the uh, economic sector of Nigeria. So the objective is to ensure that these people have the resources to do business. If they have business already, they can recapitalize. If they don't have business already, but they have ideas, they can play. Instead of you know taking other options, and what we say options, what options do they have to go for loan? To get loan, you have to come up with collateral that they, don't, they do not have. So doing this ensures that they can also do their own bits to contribute and expand the economy of the country. Okay, let's talk about the beneficiaries. What reactions are we getting from them across the nation? All right, when we talk about beneficiaries, um, of course, the, f the first thing to, I mean, the, the first impulse is to look at beneficiaries from the point of view of women or those who collect money. But I would rather first look at beneficiaries from the point of view of the system itself. The fact that these people have been acknowledged by you know, someone in the, uh, that with the status of Nigeria's first lady, Odrem Sinubu, shows that you know, the government or the society sees them, society recognizes their place. So the system is the first beneficiary. To know that when you equip these people, it is for the betterment of the country. That is the first beneficiary. They will now go down to the beneficiaries as in the individuals who have taken this grant. I mean, they are happy. In Yoruba language, one option, they, I mean, there is a word that we always bandy around. They call it Bomley Lantern. That is the extent to which people will go to go and get money. You know, the conditions are not that favorable to them. But with this opportunity that they have, they don't have to do that. So the beneficiaries are happy that, one, they are recognized in the scheme of things. Secondly, they are happy that resources are being given to them directly, put into their hands directly. And in some cases, for example, what we talk about women agricultural support program, of course, this is in agriculture, but the end game is to have them, you know, to give them economic empowerment. And it comes with training by NALDA, it comes with training you know, by all these agencies that are there to ensure training. So they have access to these uh, federal government agencies and it's good for them. So it comes with training and they're happy about that. Then when you imagine a woman farmer who cannot struggle with men taking delivery of 500,000 Naira, you know, to plow into the agricultural business, that is good. And the, 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 the feedback is that they are happy. I'm sure that uh, the, 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 the program is not a one-off program. And that means that more people can, you know, be, come into this bracket and uh, beneficiaries, the, the, the scope will increase for them. And the condition is also easy for them. Okay, let me ask this, um, Adini. Is there any way that um, the program would um, seek to sustain, you know, these people's business? Because some of these people, when you give them these monies, they don't use it for the business. But we want to see where people get these monies and actually invest in something so that they don't go back to that former lifestyle where they have nothing and they now become a burden to the society. Is there any system to make sure that they are held accountable for the money? Okay, in answer to that question, I think I would like to start by talking about the structure of Renewed Hope Initiative itself. At the helm, I mean, at the top of it, we have the first lady who is the national chairman of the, of the initiative. At state level, we have state coordinators. Of course, these are wives of state governors. Among them, you know, when you talk about zones, we also have among them who are zonal coordinators. Then it percolates down to the local government level. 
what this does is that it helps in you know selecting those who are beneficiaries. And for grants, the condition is that you have business that you are already doing. That's why it is tagged business recapitalization grants. It is expected that you have a business. It is expected that you plow this money into that business. Mm. So in doing this, we expect that at all these levels, from the federal to the subnationals, that they are screened. I mean, you talk about 1,000 in each state. There are conditions to select them, you know, which include the fact that they have businesses that are already there established. So the grant is coming for them to have more resources that they can plow into it. Of course, we expect that uh, for business people, those who are business minded, those who know that the other alternative is to go, you know, after loans that are not so favorable, they are expected to do the right thing. This is something that is meant to help them overcome their challenges, that is meant to help them expand, that is meant to help them, you know, uh, increase their investment. So we expect that as Nigerians, when, I mean, the alternative is not so good, when you have this opportunity, you do right by yourself, you do right by, you know, the RHI, you do right by uh, the first lady who is bringing this uh, largesse to you. And also the country. Of course, the country. Okay, now let's talk about the wives of the governors. Now, you did mention that um, they are the, you know, subsidiary um, ch um, chair chairs of this program in their states. Now, we have seen <coughs> the passion of the first lady. How can you tell us how, can you tell us how they are also keen in and showing their own passions, you know, in the grassroots, because they are closer to the grassroots than the first lady is. So can you tell us some of their own activities too? Yeah, of course. Um, a bottom top approach has always, I mean, been good, you know, for development that is meant to be sustainable. And the first lady, through her initiative, recognizes that. And that is why every quarter, the old meeting, you know, of course, to, talk, to take stock, of what they have done in the past, then of course to talk about the initiatives that have been lined up. So through this particular structure, the first ladies are on board. They are taken along by the first lady. So they know what is coming to their state. And of course, they, they've seen the template. I can give one or two examples where, for example, when the first lady doled out money to, I mean, gave out money to uh, the aged across the country. We, we saw states. For example, a state like Eboin, you know, adopting that same template, you know, to reach out to the aged in that particular state. And in this particular one, when she was in Asaba, we saw the government of, you know, Asaba, I mean, of Delta State, you know, adopting that same template to reach out to um, women particular leaders in that state. So, I mean, that tells us that this is what she's doing and they are trying to, you know, copy her. They are trying to, you know, jump on that, on that same platform to ensure that they cater to those who are in the state. Okay, now, um, Adeni, let's talk about your personal growth and experiences covering the First Lady. You know, we've talked about her activities and it's quite a lot. So what are your experiences? What have you learned? What are um, some of the things you've, um, the areas you've grown throughout the time you've covered the First Lady? Share with us, please. Well, I, I wish I can say it's fun. Well, because uh, it's a lot of work, but this is what we are trained to do and we do it with joy. Working with the first lady, you know, uh, on this particular, um, you know, our campaign, our initiative has been a quite op high opener for me. I mean, going around the states, seeing, you know, the people, the vulnerable, our focus has always been the vulnerable. And by, you know, working along with her, working with her, I've been able to see the depth of what we need to do as a country to actually bring these people you know, along. I mean, to ensure that there is social inclusion. So it has opened my eyes you know, to the country, the state of things, and I've also seen her passion. If you want to work with her, you have to recognize that she's passionate about these people. She's passionate about women. So <laughs> as a journalist, as you write, as you do your beat, you have to be a he for she, because you have to see three, I mean, you have to see things through our eyes and our passion. And I think we've been able to do that. It's fun and it makes one to be able to, you know, empathize, not just with women, because I use that word guidedly. They are not to be pitied. They are, they, they have potential and she has seen that potential. And we have been, you know, we, we, you don't have a choice other than to see the potential and just walk along that line. So it's been a very good experience. I, I think I understand women better. I see their potential better and Writing about them, pushing their cause along with the first lady is a good thing for me. 
quite insightful contributions. Thank you so much, Ideni Itaiwo, for sharing your thoughts on the correspondence this week. We hope to see you again sometime soon. Of course. It's been a pleasure, like I said earlier on. Thank okay. you. Now, still to come, Nigeria to ban exportation of timber. Find out after this break. Don't go away. Fellow Nigerians, this period may be hard on us, and there is no doubt that it's tough on us. But I urge you all to look beyond the present temporary pains and aim at the larger picture. All our good and helpful plans are in the works. More importantly, I know that they will work. You're still watching the correspondents. Let's now talk about agriculture. Lagos residents are now enjoying the reward of bumper harvest of the rainy season with an increased supply of farm produce at relatively low prices compared to the exorbitant prices of major staple foods. Experts say to sustain this narrative, government and other relevant agencies must address challenges of logistics and other obstacles hindering all year round farming in the country. Correspondent Joel Popola was at the popular Mile 12 market and now reports. Like the proverbial lights at the end of the tunnel, the unwanted narrative of scarcity and astronomical increase in prices of farm produce has paved way for a new era of abundance. The popular Mile 12 international market in Lagos is now a beehive unlike the lull experienced in the past. For months, the high cost of pepper, tomatoes, onions and other cooking condiments forced many households to cook their favorite delicacies with unhealthy processed condiments. Before way they sell them 75, now it's 30 to sell them 50, 52. This is more way they sell them 35, 40, now it's 25. Before for shampoo, 120, 110, now it is sell them 30,000. General Secretary, Vegetable and Food Stop Traders, Mile 12 International Market, Idris Balarabe says the gains of this farming season is sustainable. And we want federal government to help the parents on security matter. Federal government has starting helping to the farmers, give them some certain amounts to go and uh, farming. Then after then, the state government, uh, governors, they're giving them the fertilizer. Stakeholders urge government to maintain consistent agri policies that will support local production. The route to sustainability is to move past this seasonality in our agricultural production and be able to have a more stable and level production. Commercial farming, irrigated commercial farming. The price of yam has also continued on its downward slide with about 30% reduction, but traders say the demand is still low. And that's the point, Joel. All year round farming is the answer to food security in addition to paying attention to improving preservation mechanisms and other new techniques of modern farming. Many thanks. And now to issues relating to the environment. Nigeria is set to end the exportation of timber in order to protect its forests and wetlands as a legal framework is in the works to achieve it. Correspondent Charles Alpha reports that the Minister of Environment, Balarebe Abbas Lowell, gave the hint when he received Forestry Association of Nigeria in Abuja. Only 3.7% of forest cover, the minister said, is left in Nigeria as against the 25% required for any nation. Moved with the alarming rates of the ongoing logging and conversion of forest reserves in states for development, Balarabi Abbas expressed the fears that if no concrete measures are taken, even the few reserves left will disappear. I met the president and I con after I've told him the press we're facing, after all this uh, pictures, that, that the videos that have gone viral on uh, the, the log, log game that was taking place in, in Cross Rivers, Benway, 
and uh, Taraba. So I was able to convince them, look, that the need for us to, 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 re, to, to review that earlier unburning of the ban for, 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 for export of uh, wood from Nigeria. And I want to get your support, and I really want to uh, support that. We are also thinking of temporarily burning export of trees from Nigeria very soon. And, uh, and that, I think, is because we are trying to see and assess ourselves. I say we must take an audit of all the trees that we have across the, the entire states. If you fell trees, you are depriving the animals of their habitat. You are changing the ecosystem. And once the animals do not have anywhere to stay, they become vulnerable. The pushers will come in and they will kill them. So we need to sustain them, we need to protect them. And the present pronouncement by His Excellency uh, President Bola Hamed Tunumbu on the Green Project Initiative is a laudable program on whatever the association can do for them to promote more trees to be planted in Nigeria, in the state, we need, we need to do it. And I think we've had a very good robust with um, the uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, he has given us a listening here and he has promised us that um, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be in partnership with him. And, and, and he has asked us also to, to please come up with ideas what we think the government can do to sustain the forest. And definitely this will get back to him and do. He said government is fine-tuning plans to audit its forests to ascertain its true condition while also putting necessary mechanisms in place to set up an environmental crime tribunal to try cases of illegal logging, poaching, as well as other environmental crimes. He tags the Forestry Association of Nigeria to come up with plans that can help President Tinubu's greening initiatives. Globally, that is a problem. But I'm saying that in Nigeria, our problem is more, far, far more than what is at the global level. So we need to do more than we are doing. We need to redouble our efforts in trying to address uh, the issue of forestry. So that's why you are coming here to me is very important. And you are coming at the right time. Why I say at the right time is this is the time we are rolling out our forestry and our forestation uh, policies, programs, and projects. The minister also received in audience women in energy, oil and gas who came seeking ways to collaborate in the decarbonization drive of the federal government by ending energy poverty, pollution and promoting clean cooking initiatives as it affects women. I, I was very excited particularly to hear that the ministry has so many national policies that focuses on decarbonization and how we can ensure sustainable exploration, production and usage of our natural resources. It's also very amazing to meet with the different director generals of the different um, parasatals and agencies under the ministry, the NESRA, the NOSDRA, um, all the different agencies we met today, the climate team and, and so on. We are excited and um, particularly the, 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 the commitment of the minister to collaborate and see how we can partner and work together to actually see that Nigeria and uh, Africa at large, even the entire world, is um, clean. You know, we love the initiative around climate um, and clean cooking that was re recently launched by the ministry. And then we look forward to really collaborating with the ministry to achieve its set target. That's true, Charles. Deforestation has a negative impact on the environment and apart from loss of biodiversity and the effect on climate change, it also causes soil degradation and government needs to take proactive steps to tackle it. Many thanks. And with this, we conclude the correspondence this week. Thanks for sharing your time with us and we hope to see you again. From all of us, it's bye for now.